Next guest has some updated uh, data on the significant role the Latino community plays in the U.S. economy. Let's welcome global uh, business executive Saul Trujillo. He's chairman of the Trujillo Group and the Latino Donor Collaborative. The organization's uh, 2023 U.S. Latino GDP report charts the financial power and influence of Latinos in the U.S. And we, we talked about it a lot last year uh, out in San Diego at the last Latitude uh, conference. You're in Miami now. Uh, Saul, the numbers are crazy. I mean, the one that gets me is the, uh, if, if the U.S. Latinos were a country, they'd be the fifth largest behind U.S., China, Germany, and Japan. That's absolutely correct. And the new study that we're unveiling this morning says that it continues. Uh, the GDP has gone from $2.8 to $3.2 trillion. But we're also introducing new numbers relative to incomes and purchasing power and some of the the other capabilities that are reflective in the in the uh, in the study but Joe I have to say first of all we miss you here it was a lot of fun having you here last year so we're expecting you know next year it'll be back in San Diego but oh yeah the excitement is here the numbers are here and the growth is here the only thing that's missing in this report is capital flows and that's a big point I want to make. We have essentially the fifth largest economy in the world right here in our, in our country, and the data continues to show, and it's only going to get bigger as a percentage of total. But you know, the study that we talked about last year in terms of the Bain Consulting Study that showed that less than 1% of all invested capital has flowed into this cohort says there's a lot more of growth that we can go after, and a lot more innovation, entrepreneurship, other things that are, that are uh, part of the conversation here right. at Latitude uh, right. this year. And you don't need charity. It's, it's in the self-interest of the, the people that, 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 have the, that have the purse strings. That's what is weird. And if you, I didn't know it was LPP, but I'm going to start using LPP. Latino purchasing power, $3.4 trillion. So why wouldn't the capital be finding that opportunity? What's, what, why isn't it happen, happening organically, Saul? Well, that's the mystery right now. So we're going to have, you just had Mel Lagomasino on your, on your session earlier. We're going to talk about making capitalism work in the 21st century. As you know, Joe, I'm a capitalist at heart. I believe in capitalism, and I do believe the principle that says capital should flow to where the growth is. Just like we thought about growth in China 30 years ago, India 20 years ago, right here inside our country, we have a massive economy that's underinvested right now, underengaged, and that's not a whine, that's an opportunity. And so we're having conversations about structures, fund structures and other things that can be put in place by those people that you have on your show all the time. And it should be a question you ask. How are you going after this growth? And have you created new fund investing structures just like you did for China, India, and, and other sectors, even tech, you know, which I've lived in for 30 plus years. There's always ways to go after things as a capitalist, but you have to be entrepreneurial. You have to think about new structures and you have to evolve. And in the rest of this century, this cohort's only gonna get bigger and bigger. So, those who want to get in early, think about it. Think about capital and fund structures that could flow. And that's why last year, Joe, you and I talked about the, the fund that I created called Latitude Ventures, where we raised $100 million just to show that there's a prototype. And this year, we're going to feature some of the companies that we've invested in within the last year that are cut across various sectors in our economy, and they're going to be growers. They're going to have great returns. But until we had our fund, people were not investing in them. So now I'm just saying big opportunity, big numbers. It's a logical thing. It's capitalism at work. And let's make it work. And we just need to talk about it. And you all, by, by having this conversation with me, brings visibility. But there needs to be more. We need to have a special conversation about capital and structures and how we can really grow our economy. Remember last year, Saul, looking for something where the Latino cohort on a relative basis wasn't growing more quickly than, than other demos. And, and I, I don't think I found any. And I, I'm seeing it again. And I, I, 
you know, I remember most of what we talked about, but not everything. But just in terms of population growth, education attainment, um, just across the board, uh, you know, uh, either a percentage or even a multiple faster than, than most other cohorts, which also plays into the point that you're trying to make. How, can, how is it being overlooked? I, I think, to be quite frank, there hasn't been enough media coverage on it. Think about if, if Italy all of a sudden became the fifth largest economy in the world, growing faster than others, it would be a headline story in all publications, all news platforms, et cetera. But this story has not been told, and you, CNBC, and I give you credit, uh, have been telling this story, working with me and others on this. But now we have to get it in, you know, when you have your, your conferences with CEOs and financial investors and others, to ask that question. Say, how are you exploring this market that's right here? You don't have to worry about, you know, regulatory changes, political changes, other than our own domestic. And it's an opportunity, and that's all I like to say. It's an opportunity that's only going to grow, and it's going to last for the rest of the century, at least for sure in the next three, four decades. The average age cohort, the most populated age cohort, is 11 to 14 for the Latino cohort. So think about when you, you know, any of you here were 19 years old and thinking about the income that you were earning then versus 29 versus 49 and on and on, there's only growth available. The percentage of new businesses created, employer-based businesses created, and also the technology evolution is just amazing. And if you were here at MatchUp this year, you would see companies that are now competing for capital, millions of dollars we're going to invest in these companies and they're going to be growth-oriented companies for the yep. next two or three decades.